Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church in my home studio with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for being with me today and this entire week as we conclude what we began on Monday, and that is uh, the secrets of a champion. And I think we've unpacked this whole concept of being a champion all week. All of you've been taking notes, but more importantly, I hope that what we have taught this week has marked you, that, that it has caused you to rethink, how am I gonna live the rest of my life? How am I gonna live my future? Am I gonna be a chump or am I going to be a champion? God has called you to be a champion because that's exactly who Jesus is. So look again, Jesus is the champion. We are told in Hebrews chapter 12, verse two, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion. And God is calling us to be the champion. In fact, notice what it says, the Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy uh, that awaited him. And it says, we do this to keep our eyes on Jesus. Now when it says keep our eyes on Jesus, what he's saying is that Jesus is our model. He is the hero of our faith, and we're supposed to follow his example on how to become champions in our own life. And the writer tells us some things that Jesus did and we must do in our lives to become the best version of ourselves. Here's something I see in verse one, and that is leave behind whatever trips you up. Leave behind whatever trips you up. Look at verse one again. Verse one says, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. What happens if a, if um, the runner's shoes are not tied tightly and the shoes become untied? Well, they can trip up under those, those, with those uh, shoe strings not tied properly. Just get tripped up. And Satan's goal, listen to me, if Satan can't get you from getting in the race, first of all, Satan's going to try to, to prevent you from getting in the race. So whatever God's called you to do, Satan's going to say, don't, you can't do it. Although God's opening the door for you, God's put it in your heart, Satan's going to say, don't try it. Once you win in that area, then, and you're in the race, then secondly, Satan's going to try to discourage you so you'll get out. And that's where maybe someone is right now, that uh, you're in the race, you're, you're attempting to be the champion in a particular area of your life, and Satan is throwing everything at you in order to get you to quit. Don't quit. And then if that doesn't work, if he, God, Satan can't keep you out of the race, and if Satan can't get you discouraged, then Satan will do some things to trip you up while you are running. Satan will trip you, trip you up. So Saul is an example of a man who was tripped up. When David became successful after he defeated Goliath, Saul was jealous of David and he got tripped up by jealousy. And that can happen to many of us. You know what I mean? You know what envy is? Envy is resenting God's blessings in someone else's life and ignoring God's blessings in your own life. And it can trip you up. And the writer says, the sin that so easily trips us up. Don't get tripped up by jealousy. How about David? Now, Saul got tripped up by jealousy and what may trip up one person may not trip up the next person. Satan knows what trips you up. What did David get tri tripped up by? David got tripped up by lust. He was running the race, but then he, he, he fell and fell down because he took another man's wife. You know the story of Bathsheba and David, who, and it was, she was the wife of Uriah the Hittite, but David got tripped up by lust. Don't get tripped up by jealousy. Don't get tripped up by lust. You remember Moses? He was running the race doing a great job, but he got tripped up by anger and the people wanted water. And Moses said, must I bring water out of this rock for you? And instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock. But more importantly, he said, must I bring water out of this rock for you, you rebels? Well, Moses can't bring water out of a rock. He was, taking, he was taking credit for only that which God can do. And he lost going to the promised land. He forfeited going to the promised land because he allowed the people to trip him up by anger. And there's a lot of other emotions that can trip us up. Anger, jealousy, lust, uh, envy, all types of 
things that can trip us up. And the writer says, again, in verse one, it says, especially the sins that so easily trip us up. Watch, make sure your shoestrings are tied. Don't let them get untied with jealousy, lust, and envy. Then not only that, lean in for the long haul. I think if we've learned anything during this week on being a champion is that champions have the ability to not quit and endure. Go back to verse one again. Notice what it says in verse one. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. So let us run with endurance. Endurance. Um, the King James Version says patience, but patience, the word patience is the Greek word uh, macrothermos. Macro, macro means long. Micro means small, but macro means long. Macro thermos is the, Hebrew, is the Greek word for heat. So macro thermos means long heat, long heat. That's what patience means, endurance means. It means being able to take the heat for a long time. And good, good champ runners and champions are able to endure the heat. And the reason why you have to endure the heat, you have to endure the heat because success for the champion is never a sprint. It's never overnight. It's always a, re it's always a marathon and a relay race. Somebody's passed the baton to you, but it's really a marathon and a relay race. Uh, and, and in marathon, you just have to keep on going and keep on going. And God gives you the strength, amen, to endure and not quit. So leave behind that which trips you up. I'm not going to let this trip me up because I'm, I'm running. I'm, I'm a champion. I'm trying to get where God's calling me to get to. And I'm going to stick with the race because I realize that this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And as we close out, look at verse one and two again. Verse one says, verse, therefore, since we're surrounded by such a great, huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Let us run with endurance, endurance, the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who, who initiates and perfects our faith. It's the idea of Jesus as a runner, and he's enduring, and he's not letting anything stand in his way. And Jesus was a runner. Think about how great Jesus the runner was. Listen to me. This is how great Jesus the runner was. Jesus ran in creation. In creation, Jesus was a runner. I mean, he ran in creation and hung up the moon, the stars, and all of the galaxies. And then after he ran in creation, we're told that Jesus ran in the Old Testament. He ran in the Old Testament. He ran to a burning bush to call Moses on the backside of the mountain. Uh, he ran uh, to Mount Moriah when Abraham needed a sacrificial lamb and there was a lamb in the bush, Jehovah Jireh, that was Jesus. He ran to Mount Moriah and then in Babylon when Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were in trouble, Jesus ran into the fiery furnace so much so that the king said, I put three in the furnace, but I look and now there are four. And that's not only the time, the only time Jesus ran, Jesus ran through 42 generations, we're told in Matthew chapter one, he ran 42 generations and was born in Bethlehem. And then when he became 30 years old, he still ran. He ran throughout Galilee. He helped the lepers. He helped the blind. He helped sick hemorrhaging women. He kept on running until one day he ran to an upper room. And then he ran to a place called Gethsemane. And then he ran from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall. And then he ran to Calvary where he died on Calvary's cross. And then he ran into the grave where he stayed for three days and then ran while in the grave to hell where he had a revival meeting with the saints of the Old Testament. And then early on Sunday morning, he ran out of that grave in the resurrection. And then 40 days later, he ran again and got on a cloud and ascended into heaven and and then ran to the seat reserved for him, the place of honor at the right hand of God the Father. And the Bible says the same way Jesus ran and is in the seat of honor, God wants us to run also. And guess what? 
Jesus is not running. He's running with you. And one day he's going to run back into this world and he's going to take all the runners to be with him in heaven. You keep running. Why? Because you're a champion. Keep running. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. Don't let anyone discourage you or invalidate you. When you were born again, you were born to win. God has great things for you in the future. You believe God, God will arrange things for you, open up the door for you. By faith, you walk through that door. Hold up your hands and hands and fist in the air and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Listen to me, your best days are ahead of you. The devil should have killed you when he had you down. But then since God has brought you back to life, you make sure as we move beyond COVID-19 that you're going to maximize your life. You're going to stay focused. You're not going to get tripped up by silly stuff. You're going to be willing to endure. You're going to make Jesus your champion hero. And you're going to keep running and ask God to give you strength whenever you get weak. And God will do it for your good and for God's glory. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this week of study. Help us to, to develop the championship mentality. Bless your people. Inspire us to greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you so much for being with, with me this week. Look, if you don't have a church home, we invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Church. Contact us, email us, newstart at ssclive.org. We will get back with you. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for all the calls and letters that we have received. I have received about the powerful points to ponder. If you got something that you think we need to be pondering on, please email us, call us, contact us here at St. Stephen Church so that I can address some of your issues and some of your concerns. Bless you real good. Tomorrow is the Lord's Day. We will gather for worship and I invite you to invite Come and worship with us at St. Stephen Church. The pre-worship experience begins at 9 o'clock. And then at 9.30, we begin the actual worship service. So join us tomorrow for worship. Peace and blessings be unto you. And don't forget, during COVID-19, to stay safe, stay sane, and never forget that God is on the throne and is in control. See you tomorrow in worship.